So the Lancet Commission has been a very interesting project that I've been involved with for and chairing for the last um, four years. So Lancet Commissions look at um, issues, uh, if you like, prospectively. So mostly we're talking about research that has been carried out. So the remit with the Lancet Commission is to look at future trends in prostate cancer globally with a 10 to 15 year time perspective, with the aim of making recommendations about uh, how healthcare systems should fund prostate cancer treatment, how research funders should prioritize research questions, uh, things like this. Right? So, so it's a forward-looking thing rather than a backward-looking thing, which research intrinsically is. And um, so we had a global panel of experts, um, uh, all, all continents represented, um, and uh, from a range of different uh, economic backgrounds, so low- and middle-income countries as well as high-income countries, which, which tends to be where most researchers are based, and uh, people like public health experts, health economists, um, as well as urologists, oncologists, and so on. So it was a very broad-based thing, and we, we took external evidence from people like the FDA as well. Um, so the headline finding in terms of future prostate cancer trends is that whilst people tend to think of prostate cancer as a disease of elderly men in rich economies. Actually, in the future, most cases are going to be occurring in low and middle income countries and not necessarily in elderly men because um, prostate cancer starts appearing in men in their, certainly in their late 40s, if you've got a, a African heritage um, and uh, from the 50s onwards, you start to see it. And that's the first thing. And the second thing is that there's going to be a very big increase in prostate cancer in low and middle income countries. So it's going to roughly double in the next 10, 15 years or so. So at the moment, there's about 1.4 million new cases of prostate cancer annually. That's going to go up to more than 3 million by somewhere between 2035 and 2040. The reason for this is that um, uh, essentially uh, most low and middle income countries have relatively young populations, but they also have rising life expectancy. So sub-Saharan Africa, there's going to be simply a lot more men in their 60s in 10 years' time than there are now. And unlike, say, smoking, where you can have public health measures like, uh, like lung cancer, where you can have public health uh, measures like stopping smoking, there's really nothing you can do to prevent prostate cancer from occurring if you at a reasonably predictable percentage. So there will be a very large increase in cases. Now, what we know already, if you look in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, is around 60% of men present with advanced disease, and that's just always going to be bad news. So in terms of how we deal with this, um, most of the recommendations are focused on things like improving diagnosis rates, early diagnosis rates, particularly in areas where late diagnosis predominates. But actually, even in high income countries, still a substantial proportion of men present with metastatic disease. So there is more work to be done around early diagnosis there as well. But with the particular caveat in high income countries that you don't want to increase diagnosis of trivial disease and then over treat it, which we know is a risk with screening programs. So, so we make some recommendations around um, better diagnostic pathways for both high income settings. Um, which is essentially incorporating more imaging and less biopsies unless the imaging looks suspicious. But in low and middle income countries around putting in, if you like, non-doctor based diagnostic pathways. So, and we, we give specific examples of how you can do nurse based diagnosis, mobile testing, um, combining testing with testing for other things, which also affect men as they get older. So hypertension, diabetes and so on. So it's, 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 um, for me, it's been a very interesting project indeed. I've learned a lot. And um, the panel that we've got discussing this comes from a range of countries. We've got speakers from Africa, from India, from China. Um, and uh, it's, it's very different from the rest of the conference because we're going to be focusing on problems that we really don't look at very much at, in medical conferences at the moment, which I think are going to be increasingly important in the future and which really bear a lot of scrutiny.